was honored to go fly down and shoot an incredible project, a short film with two of probably my best friends now. It was such a crazy project. We shot a short film in three days on 16 millimeter film, and it was probably one of the coolest experiences ever. This project was really special, and I think it was the people that made it really special. Shout out to all you cool people who were on that project. You guys were phenomenal, such awesome people from the gaffer to the ACs to just everybody on set was just so cool. You guys were the coolest people ever. I was so stoked to work with you guys and also to the directors of the project that were just incredible human beings, Rudy and Anne. And we met over this YouTube channel, which is just crazy to think that three months ago, four months ago, I started this YouTube channel and I got to do an incredible project with incredible people. Every project comes with its own challenges and its own lessons. So I want to share with you guys the lessons I learned from camera, lighting, cinematography, blocking. I want to share those lessons with you guys because it, I learned so much and I grew so much as a DP and a person. What I realized I want to do after this project was I want to shoot a lot more projects on film and I'm going to really push to shoot the future projects that I have that are worth it on film um, because I love the process. I love the intentionality behind shooting on film. It has to be intentional because of the lack of amount of footage you can get. So you have to really make sure it's the right stuff. It makes me really put a thought into why I'm lighting it the way I am, why the blocking is this way, why I'm composing shots this way. It allows me to see composition with my eyes and not through a viewfinder. It allows me to see lighting with my own eyes instead of looking through a viewfinder. And I find that so magical. And I think the process of shooting on film is absolutely incredible. So we use the Reflex 416, which is an incredible camera. Keslo camera hooked us the f up. If you don't know, that's Ari's latest 16 millimeter camera that I think discontinued in 2007. It had color video assist, so we could see a live feed on all the monitors in a beautiful crisp image in color. Before with the SR3, you would have kind of a weird signal or have a weird output on video, which wasn't that nice, but on the 416, it was just a gorgeous image. And it was color too, which was so cool. And you could set in the settings, what stock you were shooting. So like tungsten or daylight. Um, and then it would adjust kind of the colors based on that. It would neutralize what you're seeing on the monitor, which is super cool. The directors really wanted to play into the handheld look of the film. And we were dealing with a kid actor. He was a lot shorter than me. I'm pretty short, but um, he was really short. And I wanted to play the compositions or like the shots to be level with him because we're in his world. You know, we're seeing from his perspective. So I wanted the camera to be on his level. And so there's a lot of tracking shots with handheld. And naturally, when I have the camera on my shoulders for handheld to do the tracking to keep it more stable, I'd be too high up and I'd be looking down at him. So we rented this thing called the ZG, which was an incredible thing. They actually used it in The Last of Us. And it's basically like a steady cam arm and steady cam vest. And it has this like kind of three axis, not gimbal, but the CG on the arm. And it gives the handheld look, but a more stable look. And it also allowed me to get the camera lower to the main character's perspective, which was so phenomenal. So we were able to like do these crazy tracking shots with him and stay level with him. And I actually love the tool. I'll use it again. It was my first time using it and it was really heavy. I'm not going to lie because the camera and everything on it was like 70 pounds or 60 pounds. I don't know. So it was really, really heavy. I was really getting a workout in, which was great. But, uh, for longevity, it was insane, but that uh, was a great, great tool. Um, probably for future, for a project like this, maybe having an operator designated to those more heavy lifting kind of shots, I would probably do because then I can focus more on lighting. When I get into more of the scenes where into lighting and stuff, you're going to see why, because there were some heavy, heavy scenes where we had to do a lot of lighting. The lenses we used were used the Cook SK4s, which were made for 16 millimeter. So it's the three focal lengths. I think it's like six mil, 9.5 mil and 12 mil, I believe. And that's just to cover the wider side of the focal lengths because 16 millimeter is a cropped image of 35 millimeter. I think it's like cut in half almost as my math. It's like a micro four thirds sensor kind of. Then we used for the longer focal lengths, we used the Cook S4Is, not the minis, but the S4I. So they gave us a T2, not a 2.8, because I think the minis are 2.8. We chose this because it was kind of like a softer look and I really liked how it looked on the skin tones. And I actually watched this film called We the Animals. And it's a beautiful feature film shot on this exact setup. 
And I really liked how that looked. And I didn't want to copy that necessarily, but I really liked how the lenses performed with the film in combination. And I was used to using a lot of sharper lenses on 16 millimeter film, because as you know, on 16 millimeter film, the resolution is very low. So the images tend to be a little bit softer, a little bit muddier. So I really wanted to avoid that as much as possible in 16 millimeter for like a narrative project. I think it's more about the story and I don't want to take away from the story with the cinematography. I want people to be immersed into the world. And that's my theory of why I kind of approach cinematography that way and approached it on this project and try to make it sharper. So like I said, uh, with film, you need a lot of light. So I was using 500T tungsten stock and 500 stands for like the ISO. And so I wanted the grain to be a little bit tighter because on the higher sensitive ISO films, you get a little bit more of a grainy image. So lifting your uh, image a stop or three quarters to a stop like overexposing will help make that grain a little bit tighter and a little bit less grainy. So that was something that I thought of beforehand when approaching this scene was that, okay, I have to use higher sensitive ISO. So I need to make that grain a little bit tighter. So I need to lift the exposure up three quarters to a stop over. So that's really <laughs> difficult um, because now I'm exposing for around 320 ISO, or I think I, maybe I was even doing 250 just to get a little bit extra. So that is like a lot of light um, that you need. So what we did was we bounced a couple of the Nan Lux uh, into a 12 by over here. And it was a 12 by ultra bounce. And what that did was it was far away uh, behind this tree and kind of bounced and filled in the house here with this blue. And we set the light to about, I think it was about, 6,500 Kelvins. And that was our consistent moon color on this film. So we kept our moon color 6,500 Kelvin when I was shooting 500T tungsten because tungsten is 3,200 Kelvins. So when you use like daylight and stuff, it turns very blue. And I thought this 6,500 looked really nice. And we bounced it into this ultra bounce and it kind of filled in this house here, which was really cool. And then my gaffer set up a mirror board just kind of like adjacent to it and blasted a hard light through it, which was another Nanlux. I think it was a Nanlux 2400B. And you can see these hard lines on the house just to give some like shape to it. It was like this tree here. Um, and you, yeah, you can see the tree shape here and it looks really, really good. And then what we had was like a... I think we had like a one of the Nanlux kind of sky panel things through a silk pushing this way and just kind of edging him here just to create this uh, shape on him. And that was basically it. I, oh, also inside we had like some tungsten fixtures kind of just bouncing into the ceilings here just to fill in kind of the windows here just to give it some life. It was super simple, but it's really weird because when you see this, on the 416 monitor, it looks really bright and overexposed and does not look like what you're imagining. But then when you bring it into the grade, it looks exactly how I imagined it. So you had to trust your eye and you had to trust your light meter that you're getting the image that's gonna give you this. So <laughs> you have to be really confident in what you're doing um, because I gotta say on the monitor, it did not look like this. It looked bright as heck. Uh, it looked like a, a day scene. You can see in this BTS, it's just super nuclear bright on the house. Um, but that's how much light we needed to actually expose our camera to get it to this dim look, which is kind of crazy. So this shot here was actually um, quite complex. I just wanted to break this down because this is quite a large lighting setup. You can see we were tracking him down through these stairs and then you go into the living room. Now... You know, it seems really simple, but the, I think we used every single light we had. So basically how we approached it was up here. We started up here. So we had a Nanla bouncing into the ceiling up here just to kind of bring the ambience up because this was really, really dark. And so that was just kind of bouncing up into the ceiling here. And it kind of also edged him here a bit and kind of filled in some shadows. And then as... As he's walking here, there's a um, 
mirror board outside pushing through this window. And that's just to illuminate that window because the sun wasn't really coming from here. And then we had another Nanlux through this window. And we actually ended up putting a 4x4 diffusion frame on this window because we started seeing outside because in film, uh, the highlights just hold up so well. So it, you can see so much detail outside. It's so impossible to clip the highlights. So we were seeing all the equipment outside. So we put a 4x4 diffusion frame. And then we had another Nanlux kind of pumping through this door window. And here was interesting. We had uh, Nanlux coming through hard through the window, kind of edging everybody. And then we had like a little book light in the corner just to kind of fill in the shadows and wrap that window light around. And you can see how beautiful it looks. Look how natural that is. It looks so great. And that uh, haliation from that back window there is so gorgeous. That's actually just the sun hitting that window. And we come over here, and then we have to light this room as well, believe it or not. We actually had an Anlux coming through this window here, just edging these guys, creating this hard thing on the wall here. And then we put 200-watt um, tungsten bulbs in each of these sprockets up here in this chandelier. And that gave that beautiful, nice kind of warm glow, this warm glow on this fork i think that is um and just created this beautiful warmth i love how the 16 millimeter looks with these haliations like it's just gorgeous like this is all purely from the film it's just so beautiful and you can see that the green is a lot tighter and a lot finer and that's because we used 250d stock so basically so 250d so the 250 stands for the iso and then the d stands for daylight and the reason why we chose to use uh, 250D on this scene was because I wanted it a little bit tighter. If I was to use 500T stock, it'd be a lot grainier, a lot more gritty because the higher the ISO, same with digital, right? The more you crank up your ISO, the more noisy it gets. So same with film. The more sensitive your film, the more grainy it's going to be. So that's why I went with the daylight stock on this one. And I also like how it makes it a little bit warmer and just, it looks really good. So I wanted tighter green. I wanted that warmer look. And that's kind of why I went with that 250D. And I really like how kind of sharp it is. It's it's really, really nice for 16 millimeter. Um, and I overexposed this entire scene, probably a stop as well. That was kind of my rule of thumb. I was going between three quarters and a stop again, just so that the shadows don't get all mucky here. So it still holds detail, like you still see her buttons in her, her black dress here. And if I wasn't to overexpose it all, it would get really mucky and broken down really quickly. So I wanted to kind of keep the detail in here. And then you see him run off. I think we just had another Nanlux 2400B hitting the ground here and just kind of creating this beautiful hard stuff on the wall and uh, this beautiful hard stuff on the sink. That's all just from the 2400B coming through this window here. And Nanlux hooked us up so much. They gave us so much equipment um, and their lights are incredible, literally game changers. The 2400B is like a 4K HMI, but it is also bicolor. So it's like a 4K tungsten, I believe as well. So that was really awesome to get that tungsten quality light because we were setting all our daylight fixers to tungsten to get this warmer kind of daylight coming in because I really like how that tungsten -y daylight looks. It's like a warmer daylight, almost like a sunset kind of vibe, and um, it just creates this warm glow, which is so beautiful. So here's the reverse shot of the whole thing, and you can see right here that we have no diffusion on the window here because we're not seeing out the window, but we have our 2400 just coming in nice and hot. And it's just it's just edging him here on this side of his face. And that's the nice thing about 60 millimeter film. You can play hard light on their faces and it just looks really good. It, 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 it's not like digital wear. It feels too hard. It kind of has a soft blend to his face and it just kind of creates that thing. We added some haze here. You can see a little ray back there. And then here for his key light, when he stops here, we want to motivate it like the window was kind of hitting him. So what we did, we put a little tube right here, a little Titan tube, and that is just kind of pushing and creating this beautiful light on his face. And you can see it's very soft. We use these things called light socks. And it's like this diffusion that you uh, put over the uh, Titan tube. And you can see that the gradient of shadow 
on his face is super soft and just falls off really nicely. Increases eye light in his eye. I love the eye light. Looks really, really good. There was actually a situation where we got to a location to shoot this biking scene and we had to put the camera on this black arm and the Ronin 2 and that creates complexity to it. It needs time to actually balance everything and rig everything up to the truck and put all the monitors and everything inside the truck and get everybody organized to actually do the shot. And we were running late to that scene because we had another scene and we were trying to cram in so many scenes into and so many locations into such a short day. We only had like eight to 10 hours, I believe. So we were dealing with this time problem. And so we were running out of light, unfortunately. And so we were originally going to shoot this biking scene on 250D stock um, to make it a little bit warmer. But then we ran out of light. And I saw so I was like, because I was always metering while they were um, balancing the Ronin, balancing the camera. I was metering the sky. I was metering how much exposure I was getting on my face in the set that we were going to have him riding his bike. And I was not getting enough light to actually overexpose, you know, three quarters to a stop over. So I was like, okay, let's load up a 500T mag and we'll rock tungsten stock for this. And I'll just grade it back in the grade which I did in this shot, which turned out really good. I'm okay with it being a little bit more grainy, just as long as it's not underexposed. Because once it's underexposed, you're kind of <laughs> Thank you so much to Nanlux, who hooked us up with the entire lighting package, and also Keslo Camera for hooking us up with the camera package. Both companies, absolutely incredible people. Couldn't have done this project without you guys. And the crew, the crew was phenomenal. You guys were so killer. If you guys are watching this video, I absolutely adore you guys, and I love you guys so much. You guys made my life amazing. Um, I was going into a new place, um, not knowing anybody. And I was a little bit like, you know, oh shit, I don't have any crew that I've known. And, um, so it was kind of a, a weird feeling for me, but you guys made me feel like I was at home. You guys worked so hard and I really appreciate everybody on the set and the friends that I made just unreal experience. You can't get better than that. Filmmaking, making cool stuff and doing it with best friends. That is probably the top of life feeling. And that month of February was one of the best months of my life. And can't thank doing this YouTube channel. Can't thank you guys enough. And I can't, yeah, I just feel so grateful for everything. And um, it was one of the coolest experiences ever that I've ever had in my entire life. And um, <laughs> yeah, so I appreciate all you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, leave a comment. Let me know what you guys want to see next time. And leave a little thumbs up if you can and hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next video. See you later.